Hey guys, welcome back to ESL TV for the EPS Germany Winter 2014 League of Legends Grand Finals between a faculty and playing ducks. Playing ducks currently up 1-0 in this best of three. It's a grand finals. They already won in a 2-0 for faculty and a 2-1 for playing ducks. And we're gonna be kicking off the pixie beds in just a few seconds. I'm just the captain, Alex R Alex Machine Richardson. Oh, nice. And here we go, drop you in the game in just a second as I can hit the buttons quickly. Bam! What up? That was brilliant. Fantastic. Probably the worst casting I've ever done in my life. Uh, probably the best, actually. Yeah, yeah, it's one or the other. <laughs> anyway, it's uh, some bans and some picks have happened. We should probably talk about them. So first up, let's talk about bans. Zerath, Jason, Asandra snatched away immediately by N Faculty. They know what they don't want to play against, and the only one we saw last game was Lissandra. So that's a targeted ban, of course, already to Koi. And either side of things, Twisted, Fate, Jarvan, and Zed removed. So they're pretty much the same bans we saw the first time from playing Ducks. They know what they don't like to play against. They know what counters what they've got in store for us. And so they're getting them out and about. So what's been picked, Jason? Walk us through those uh, end faculty picks. You can see Corky, Zinzao, and Thresh. So we have a Corky and a Thresh lane. Where does, where does that where does that kind of... Here, Jason, why don't you walk us through the picks that we have? Uh, we, why don't you walk us through the picks? They've picked Corky, they've picked Zin. Picked... Thanks, thanks, Jason. <laughs> No, well, you, I mean, you, you look to me like I'd <laughs> call you off guard, so I... No, you're just like, walk well, us through the picks, but let me tell you each of them beforehand, so you don't have to say anything. Oh, well, I mean... I'll so we have Corky, we have Zin, and we have Thresh, um, Alex. Um, on the other side, we have Nar, Sona, Elise, and Lucian. Um, and on the other side, we have... Aurelia... And... Syndra? Syndralia? I think, uh... Azirelia? Azindra? Yeah, I think we're most likely going to be seeing a Syndra in that mid lane. Azir, popular, actually, at this stage of uh, the patch. I've seen it picked a couple of times and seen it played well. Might as well get some practice in now. A couple of times, and yeah, perhaps that's what he's doing. He knows... I mean, we've seen such safe picks from Sos Perfect. Oh. What's going on here? As your top lane. Okay, so something new from N Faculty. They're just not pulling out all the stops. Of course, Zinzao Jungle will be interesting as well from Obvious. As that final top lane, oh, sorry, mid laner is going to be selected uh, by PD. You know, I've never met someone that enjoyed playing Zinzao in the jungle. I have a friend who likes it. Like, I've never, I've never met anyone that's like, yeah, Zin's my favorite jungler. Like. He's a very much a, uh, I mean, he's, uh, I'm trying to think of a way to describe him. AP Zinzao is fun. Yeah, but you're not good guy Gary. <laughs> no. I, mean, I think that's to, his name. Well, the guy who builds AP Zinzao? Yeah. I don't know. It was funny to heal like half your health in one like auto attack. It's it's every third strike, whatever mm -hmm. it is, yeah. So Zero versus Nar, that's going to be interesting. Uh, Zero obviously has the ability to get away from Nar, just like Nar has the ability to on the other way. Um, the ultimate of Azir, though, I don't really see it doing too much, except maybe knocking Nar back and Elise back, but it could be exactly what they need to protect their squishy backline, since Zin's the only really one to uh, be tanky for them. So we'll see how this one goes. We could see the double roll Namakon build. We could see the Marlon Namakon plus the Nash's Tooth build for Azir. Or we could just see him build completely different, because... Because why not? You know? Obviously. Because why not? And so, uh, <laughs> I was waiting for you to notice like when half your face was off the screen. I'm not just leaning like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Come I was, on, get I close, was staring. Get close to me, Alex. Come on, bring it in. Bring it in. Too close. Not so, close enough. So yeah, I was, uh, I was just staring at the champions. I was looking at the um, Zin Zhao, which I've never seen. winged Hazar has Zin Zhao. So I haven't seen that skin before. Probably because I don't see many Zin Zhaos, but uh, I think that, that has to do with it more than the skin. Yeah. So uh, that's happening, and uh, as we summon onto the rift, we'll have a little look at what the. Uh, get there. We'll see what they've got for us. You can see actually when we do throw it to game, Azir just having a, got two soldiers dancing for us at that starting pit. Oh, we missed it. All right, so kicking off the game here, guys. Remember, this is our grand final here of EPS Winner Germany 2014. And of our League of Legends sections, we had, of course, FIFA StarCraft 2 happening on Friday. We had CSGO happening on Saturday. And today, to round things out with, we've got a little bit of League of Legends action for you. And I'm going to find out how this one's exactly going to work out. Looks like we'll have AD carry supports going to the bomb side. Perfect. I'm going to head to head against Avenue here in a 1v1 early on. Might go back to base to heal up, or might just say, forget it, we're real men. We don't back. Nope, Avenue. We'll go back to base. <laughs> but either way, everyone else just sitting up, lining across the scrimmage here. 
And playing Ducks, you know, when we had in fact to be the favorite in this one, able to pull out the first map victory. Yeah, we'll see if this is going to be taken to a second, uh, second to his third, sorry. Well, of course, in the second as uh, we go on into this one. And I have seen this in Zaskin. I just didn't know it was called Winged Azar. Today I learned. As, uh, of course, this is the grand final. Jason has already outlined just how important this is for both teams. Playing Ducks surprising us with a uh, first map victory. And, of course, 2,500 euros is no uh, laughing matter. Well, you're laughing if you win it, I guess. But uh, Sona rolling her face on the keyboard as we wait for the minions to spawn. They are going to be perhaps starting at that Gromp in that top lane. Looks like Azir is going to be assisting him in that. In the meantime. We'll get to it. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> just in the meantime. Uh, Sona just playing with some beautiful... Beats. I like the start animation for Gromp. Oh, it's cool, yeah. There's like a little like mushroom. Hup. And the frog jumps on it and he's like, Ah! <laughs> Sorry. Look at the uh, nice leash from Azir managing to use his uh, soldier just to make sure he gets the lane quick as quick as possible. In the meantime, starting on the Krugs, you can see Zoe going for Elise once again. Something was probably worth highlighting as he seems to be doing this uh, despite our... Uh, I mean, we say this. I mean, we keep criticizing him, his picks and his jungling, but I mean, it's been working well enough. He, they managed to get the first victory and going into this one, we'll see. Oh, wow. That's a cool little read. Avenue putting the ball right where the return path was for Perfect, but Perfect waited until it went down to go back so he didn't take any damage off that. That was really cool. Shows his uh, kind of mastery here of, of LeBlanc. It's important as well. Obviously, CSing on LeBlanc is usually pretty tough in the early game. Uh, when you're playing against a LeBlanc, you re Oh, hello, Zyra's in trouble. Look at the damage Koi's putting out just with these auto attacks actually forcing him to back away. Uh, with that, that kind of enhanced mana cookie is going to give him that extra bit of health early to get away from that one. Meganar's going to make an appearance, but that's just going to mean farming in a slightly different manner for a short period of time. But as I was saying about the uh, LeBlanc and uh, Syndra matchup, of course, when you're an opponent against a LeBlanc, your main focus is just pushing her to the turret because she does struggle. She struggles to CS under turret uh, more than some mid laners and doesn't look like that's the plan at the moment for Avenue. In the meantime, bottom lane as well here. We do have... Sedra only about half HP here. Obviously, sustain versus no sustain lane. You know, the Relic Shield will help out a little bit. So, are you going to visit the bottom side here? And it looks like maybe to kind of punish Sedra in a little bit. And you won't sneak his way through here. The Cocoon, we'll see if it's going to land. And, well, they unfortunately will not here. And the Flay will miss as well here. But they do force a flash out of Mountain. So, now having that Summoner down, he could go for the Regank, which we've seen happen before. Um, when Play Ducks played in their best of three earlier on up against Crowd Control. And I actually gave their bottom lane, you know, the Alistair Corker that they had, a chance to actually find it out because they were losing that one so horribly up against that Sona lane. These uh, kind of return ganks. There's a lot of, there's a lot of kind of variation actually in the uh, current jungle meta of uh, kind of how you can approach ganking. I've seen a lot of kind of early level three, four ganks, which of course, I mean, we're no stranger to them prior to that, but they certainly seem to be in a lot greater quantity. Maybe that's just the type of junglers we're seeing more of. I mean, the Pantheon, stuff like that, it's very strong uh, levels kind of with a red buff. Well, any, any level once you've got the red buff, so we'll see. At the moment, though, this top lane matchup's looking pretty back and forth, actually. I mean, Koi, he seems to be very strong when he does get onto Zaya, but Zaya obviously has the uh, kind of zoning potential, as any Azir does. Farming away, trying to stay level 16. will make it 18 to 22 in terms of CS. And uh, all lanes pretty much even or as even as they can be. Lucian slightly ahead, five out five or so. So yes, but jungle, seeing a little bit of a kind of jungle steal, snatching that wolf away. This looks like ob obvious, maybe making a move for the Syndra, slightly overextended avenue. Uh, he actually should go down from this one if he doesn't get a flash off in the right direction. The flash comes in with the slow and oh. the binding. And that will be a dead Syndra here. First one picked up for playing our friend faculty. And to keep in mind is that, you know, Zinzai is a very early game jungler. If you don't have a strong early game, then you kind of struggle as the game goes on. But with that first blood going his way, that Hunter's Trailblazer, he's off to a fantastic start as well. Now, for the Flash Avenue, they could easily go for the regank on him and just punish him over and over and over again. That five-minute period now where they know that there's a very vulnerable Syndra with no real form of escape. You have to be very quick on your uh, button to be able to get a knockback on Zinzao's charge. But, uh... Oh, oh, oh Zio. Trying to recall. Nar says no. And uh, I'm a bit of a sucker for these interrupted uh, interrupted recalls. You can see, like, just wasting them time. They're not going to get any CS out of it unless, of course, uh, Koi lets him. 
And as the wave pushes to the turret, he's just going to be able to farm from a distance quite happily. And Zara as well. I mean, this doesn't have much mana to work with here, as you see. And, like, his last hits, he's keeping up, but he doesn't have much mana to really fight up against Cory, who's just based off a of cooldown, uh, you know, cooldown with his abilities. So, oh, another interrupt coming in. Zao not going to be forced back, or not going to be allowed to go back to base here anytime soon. And Koi doing a good job so far. Well, at least force the teleport out of him. Finish up that Phoenix Codex. So it looks like he might go for that Nashus 2 with Omar Lenormand Khan right off the bat. But obviously, it'll be his path to choose. And we can see Koi going back, picking up the workings here of a Hex Stringer in the meantime. Avenue up against uh, So it's Perfect. Obviously, you can see the damage what? he's able to do here with that Phoenix Codex and the extra Doan's Ring. That's that, that first assist coming in for him. It'll net him a little bit of an extra item. That's I wonder. What, I, I, I'm just waiting for, obviously, to just regank. Like... He's trying to help other lanes out, but you know, Bomb's losing a little bit, but just regate middle over and over again. Allows Sos Perfect to be the one to roam around and help assist for these kills in other lanes. Like, once you get him going on the Blanc, he can one-shot anyone on the team. You raise a very good point, and I think the obvious just wasting time at this stage. As Ness Thresh lands a hook now, it's not really going to be worth his investment. Looks like Zoya's going to do try and return the favor onto Sos Perfect, but I mean, uh, landing a cocoon on a LeBlanc is a near impossible task. Sos Perfect would have to be, I mean, looking away from his screen to actually catch that cocoon as he's actually used his W before he used his ultimate to get out of that one. But uh, I don't think that's going to happen. Looks like instead at least he's going to turn our attention to the overextended Azir in that top lane. As obvious is also perhaps going to make a move for the middle. Zio though does spot him out with that ward in Tribush and he's just going to continue happily farming away as any mm. top lane. He actually wasn't does. spotted until you went back towards that tribe. Like if he sat this bush right here, he would have been fine. That would have been a free kill on a Zio, but uh, unfortunately, they misread into it. Zio was backing away from Koi, trying not to obviously die. And obviously, uh, you know, Zoe took that as like a, oh, well, they speed me, so I have to back away kind of thing. In the meantime, Bomb Southern, you see Cedrian trying to be a little bit aggressive, but again, as you can see, off of his health bar, really hard for him to trade here up against this combo. Very difficult. And look at the trades that they can do out, put out as well. You can see just the power of Sona. Two members in that bot lane, very low on health, and Brokey knows it. He has not quite got his culling, though, and it would have been nice to have that before going in on that one. Instead, just looking to zone them away as he does finally pick up six. As does Sona at the exact same time, though. So there's a crescendo and a culling they need to keep their eyes out for. And uh, in the meantime, CS still pretty level. About five CS separating these top laners. And... Uh, Actually, a huge discrepancy in that bot lane. Something we haven't managed to be able to highlight previously is 72 to 48. Corky or Sederin. Really? Has Sedrian? Sederin? Sed Sedrian. Sedrian. I will get him right. I don't want to keep butchering these people, poor people's names. But yeah, so Sedrian, I mean, he's been having a tough time. He's kind of farming safely. Of course, that Sona Lucian lane is pretty tough, and I don't think that's going to really be too much at that stage. Brokey does get hooked in, but... He knows that if Corky overextends, it's going to be a free kill for him. Pickaxe and Dorans to just a long sword and uh, health crystal. And here comes the culling. It's going to be going straight into the face of Mountain, and he's not going to be able to uh, make much out of that. More of a molehill than a mountain. As they're forced to back away from this one once more. Obviously not here, though. He has level 6. Coaching this around, knowing that there's no flash up on Saves, knowing that his uh, crescendo is off cooldown as well, or on cooldown. So up to the top side, could potentially turn this gank around if uh, if we do see Obvious go in for the hook. Not going to land. And Obvious going to run straight into this one. Gets the lunch as well in the wrong direction because of the flash coming out of Mountain. And it pulls him in the wrong spot. Now Obvious being forced back. Your teleport coming in. This is bad. Not doing damage all over the shop. Looking for a second as well. It's actually Lucian to pick up the double. That's a good kill distribution they're looking for to get Elise out safe and sound. But here comes LeBlanc. She's hungry for a spider, but not going to quite connect the Ignite. Maybe going to take away one more tick is all it's going to take, but it's not going to happen. As Cedrian looking so very low as Syndra jumps into the party as well. And as all of that comes to an end, just one kill. Uh, oh, sorry, one respawn now. It says two kills overall. Yeah, Lucian picking up the double kill right there for Brokey, so great job by them, and... Oh, Sedrin, oh, he just barely... No, he goes down from the red buff! Oh, my. And Brokey gonna pick up a third kill off of that one, so nice little flash catches Sedrin off guard, and that just gave them a huge lead here in this bottom lane. And it, it was kind of a long time coming. Lucian, he did have the lead in the lane, in fact, the whole lane, Sona was doing great poke as well, and uh, finally, they have some kills to, uh, to show that. Three to one, PD. Starting with a lead once more, right at that 10 minute mark, the gold lead is looking all too familiar from the uh, first game. 15,000 to just 13 and a half. 
And as they uh, go into this one, it's starting to uh, to be all oh so familiar, Jason. One thing you have to keep in mind if out, everyone out there that's kind of like, oh, and faculty, how are they ever going to win the expansion tournament? Well, they are running with a different top lane in the expansion tournament than they are here. They need to have Zyle to keep their three German rule. As you see, Koi going to get engaged on pushback into the turret as well, and that's going to be very dangerous for him. As now we're going to be checking out Mountain here, as it looks like he will drop. Look at Koi's positioning. There's nothing he can do. Sayo, the top laner who, no doubt, is uh, probably feeling the pressure and trying to fill the huge shoes of Zazas. Well, the thing is, like, he's not doing bad. Not like, at all. He hasn't done bad at any game. So it's not like, you know, in faculty needs Zazas to win. Maybe Zazas is, like, kind of the caller for their team, but no hasn't done bad at all here. Now Avenue get engaged on. Yeah, look at these splashes blasted. Obvious is going low as well. The courtesy of the spider to finish that one off. They know there's a clone of there. They take it out anyway. They don't want that littering there. Someone has rift. And once again, Souls Perfect gets away. And the, this is the beauty of LeBlanc. You can always expect there's always going to be something up our sleeve in terms of a, a Duke or Escape or It's so hard to start stacking up the deaths on LeBlanc. I think we did that. We, see, we saw uh, one LeBlanc struggle earlier today. But other than that, it's very tough to connect. Yeah, that struggle was real. Um, actually, no way for you playing like, on crowd control up against playing ducks. He like could not get a kill the entire game. It seemed him. Obviously, that whole assassin, assassin potential out of him just was gone, and wasn't able to do anything about that. But either way, Namakon finished, uh, finished up here for Avenue. Now Namakon done for Zio as well. And you can see the DFG coming in for So's perfect very, very soon here. And not to mention Sedrin sitting on his uh, Sheen, not even close to his Triforce done just yet. We're losing the other side. He's getting really close to having an Infinity Edge. Yeah, really close indeed. There's a lot of gold in the uh, Lucian side of things. Look, Z. Uh -oh. Hello, this is going to be do or die for Zio, and it's looking pretty confirmed as the Narok comes in. They're just looking for the, an assist as well. Syndra's not even going to get there in time to assist Avenue. Just a, a kind of supporting presence for that gank. And obvious. Wasn't quite there in time and is just instead going to have to back away from that one. Perhaps take the Skittle Crab if he uh, wants some extra vision in that river. But they've got wards there anyway. They don't want to waste that. And instead, all settles once more. I feel like Azir is like very close to like a Heimerdinger. Like, it's a Heimerdinger that can move his turrets. Because if you're ever going to fight someone, you have to fight near your own sand soldiers, right? So you, if you want to do like max amount of damage, obviously you can shoot them across and do damage from that as well. But... You kind of have to get inherently tanky to, to deal with that and to, to obviously tight someone long enough within those uh, in those mobs. And you know, I'm going to pop the ultimate on a perfect. Won't get the kill. And we'll pop the passive. And still, either way, Plane Ducks, they're on a little bit of a roll here. They're on a little bit of a tear. They are a huge terror, and it's really good to see a team like this uh, upsetting. I, I mean, there's no shame in saying that, that they are most definitely the underdogs going into this game. Purely in faculty's position, the fact that they are, of course, it's been mentioned before, we mentioned again that they, of course, uh, have the opportunity to play in the expansion tournament. Will actually be here in our studios. It will. Live on ESL TV underscore LOL. I'm not sure it's casted by yet, though. I believe it's Panky, Stress, Pulse, and I think maybe Quick Shot in Deficio. We shall see. That would be interesting. Good lineup. As uh, we go into this one, 18,000 to 23. That gold deficit is growing so quickly. We're 14 minutes in. It feels weird to read that. In faculty, so far behind at this stage. And uh, it's going to be interesting once more to see where uh, or the power, how they embrace the power of Lucian. I mean, four kills at this stage of the game is uh, not unheard of, but it's certainly not common as he's going to be very, very strong. Surely going to be sitting on quite a hefty amount of gold. He's got about 1,500. So, yeah, he's waiting to uh, get back to base and complete that Infinity Edge. Yeah, I probably will go back with this wave as well here. Just wants to, he wants to pressure Corky. When that Infinity Edge is done, so then Corky can't finish that Triforce anytime soon. Now give him a nice power spike here to go for the duels. Not to mention, they continue to shove this bottom side and might even be able to turn around a 2v3 with, you know, Zin joining the party because of how strong he's going to be. I mean, four kills up. No deaths, and he has a 30 CS lead that he's been had, or he's had the entire time. Like, this has really worried me for uh, in faculty side. Yeah, it could be. Uh, well, it could be trouble. Yeah, the the one kind of redeeming factor I think that in faculty have now is that they managed to draw out that game to 45 minutes in game one. And I mean, whether that was in faculty drawing it out or just uh, PD playing too p p passively, I mean, 
That remains to be seen. Jason, your, your thoughts on that? Was it just PD? PD didn't know how to close. It was PD, right? Okay. Yeah, they didn't know how to close that one. So not so much end faculty knowing how to stall. No, and I, I so don't think so. We'll see if that's going to become an issue, because, I mean, PD, they don't know how to close, or it didn't seem like that in game one. And, I mean, I'm surprised we haven't seen more plays for Dragon. Going to be up in 1 minute 30. Well, I think it's only been killed once, right? Yeah, it's only been killed yeah. once, so we might see a play for Dragon come in here if we have end faculty. But I don't feel like they can really contest it. Like, Azir's too squishy, Perfect's too squishy, Sedrin's too squishy, and Avenue, who has Merlo's uh, Nomicon done, and he also has the workings of his DFG. Like, just with the new star draw alone, like, that is an insane amount of ability power, and let's just say his ultimate does a good 400, 550 damage. Like, look at Sedrin's health, that's over a third. Over, yeah, over a third of his life. Yeah, and then you throw in, of course, the Nar jumping on his face, the Lucian, who's got a crazy amount of AD now. He's got a Zeal and Infinity Edge complete. That's uh, that's a lot of, lot of damage in a short space of time. So, as that dragon is going to be spawning in 40 seconds, we're going to start seeing this battle for vision. And talking of vision, this these two teams seem to have both, uh, kind of their vision, plans for vision pretty much sussed out. You can see, uh, actually, Zoyu making the most out of that uh, Raptor Oracles. Was that his or was that the opponent's? That was the opponent's. It was following. Oh, okay. Him. So yeah, when the enemy of course smites their walls, so they get the uh, mobile ward. Which is yet I've, uh, kind of one of the least inspiring, I think, uh, in terms of jungle camp smite mm -hmm. rewards, I yeah. think. Oh, Lucian bottom side looking for Sedge, and now oh, as you can no. see, Colin coming in at a little bit of a weird time, but able to kite both them. And I'm going to feel like he could 1v2 them, most likely. Uh, you can see Sedrin died almost instantly, but they forced them back right when Dragon spawned in. Now they won't have their AD carry, and this should be another free Dragon here for playing Ducks. Yeah, it's going to be the second one, most likely, as... Uh, that dragon is going to be stunned, but no, they look like they're going to be trying to make a play for it. You can see Thrash is on his way as well. They're pinging it. But surely that's going to die before they even have a chance. I would assume so. You know, the land trying to get back on the side of LeBlanc, trying to burst it down. LeBlanc seals it away, but obviously going to be taken down from that one. I'm not sure exactly why he went in as well. And they do secure one kill for the dragon. Not that big of a loss because right now they can push in for these turrets because now with the jungler now gone, the wave clear out of so perfect. Well, iffy. I'm going to find out if they do want to take a tier 2 turret. They, I think they usually should be able to grab this one middle. At least still getting caught out, though. Oh, dearie me. At least goes down as well, and that's not going to be the best news as PD trying to pressure on this turret. Hook does connect. Koi could be in trouble. I don't think it's going to be enough, though, as Mountain is going to flash away, trying to keep himself alive. Koi following, and though, does take him down. The box is summoned as well, and to no avail, as once again, LeBlanc could be in trouble. No mana to get away from this one. Does have a passive, though, but that's only going to last for a couple oh, of seconds. Wow. That's the Gnar ult you needed as Koi looking to make moves, as is Lucian with a double. And that, my friends, is a quick and very clinical response from PD. So Zoe getting caught down towards the bottom side of the jungle. <laughs> Not that bad, actually, because it pulled two people down there, pulled Wazir and LeBlanc, and allowed him to take a middle turret, then forced, obviously, uh, in fact, to go for a fight that they didn't want to, picked up two more kills off the back of that, and now they're looking at a almost 6,000, actually, exactly 6,000 gold lead here. 19 minutes in. Uh, that sounds wrong. It, I mean, from the games we've casted before, that just doesn't, that sounds like there's been an error. That's a huge amount of gold in such a short space of time. So 19 minutes in, 10 to 4 in kills. We've already highlighted the gold lead, but a great deal of that gold lead comes from the turrets 4 to 1. So four turrets already taken down, nearly 20 minutes into this game. And I'm pretty sure by the end of the last game, N Faculty had, it was, was it 19 to 2? So already N Faculty have doubled their kills from the last game. I don't know if that's saying too much for him, though, unfortunately. <laughs> I mean, one thing they had their advantage was Zai was winning his lane CS, but right now, playing Ducks are winning in every single lane and farm, and... That's never a good sign when it comes down to it, but RSC with 14 kills in 19 and a half minutes. A little word here for Infaculty. Like again, you know, Zazas is their top laner. I don't know if he's the caller for the team, which it could explain, you know, Infaculty's kind of presence. I mean, Plain Ducks aren't LCS caliber. And yeah, wow. they're they're not. I mean, they're, they're, they're not. And yet they're, you know, pushing Infaculty to the brink of a loss right now here. So I wonder if Zazas actually is their caller? Because Zayo hasn't done a bad job at all here in this top lane. Yeah, I think you're right. I think Zaza's, of course, strong individual as well. Zaya probably not on par, but he very well could be. Uh, but you can't depend on like if Zaza's exactly. is that much better. You can't depend on your top laner always winning his lane to make you win games. Oh, like, but he hasn't lost his lane. That's exactly. The, so that's uh, the but real he question. Well, remains. he hasn't lost it, but he hasn't like snowballed it. Yeah, kind of yeah. Thing. But the question remains is 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 the shot caller missing? I mean, I'm going to be interested. I'm probably going to go down and after, afterwards and ask them, uh, depending on if this map does go to a third, and just see. What kind of what's what's really affecting them? Well, uh, I think if we could answer that, we'd probably be their analyst. 
Yeah, maybe and they we, have, we put him out of a job. Well, they have move it again. You know, XL's just play for Dragonborns uh, with support with Hosun. And he's made them look pretty good. So, you know, help get them to this point in their careers. But they're having a tough time really doing much in this game here. Pushing on the spawn turret. Seems to drop extremely quickly here. Stun. Only on a Corky will back away. So it's perfect trying to come in, but that turret again almost down. Teleport will be coming in from right above them. And Zaya looking for something, but he's just a zero. He can't really do too much here. And Koya will join the party to help out him. The Sand Soldiers can really do a lot of damage if he can, you know, get them in towards the back line. Like he can stop a push pretty damn easily. Can't do much damage to Koi, but to everyone else he can do some pretty good numbers. I can see that turret very low. I'm expecting them to maybe just push for it or maybe play safe. Because Dragon coming up about two and a half minutes time. Baron is available. And Broki doesn't really take that much just yet here from Perfect. Yeah, Perfect. He's in a strong position at the moment. This time not going for that Morellos first. Instead, we're going to see the DFG LeBlanc. And that gives him that, that real scary element to him. Of course, he can really just knock a player out of the map. Uh, well, I see our player. It has to be a very specific choice. Of course, it's not going to be the Spirits Visage Hex Drinker now. But uh, perhaps the Syndra, even the Lucian. Oh, the turn! This is going to be bad. Obvious is just completely eliminated. Zayo's looking to meet a similar fate there as Corky, laying down some huge amount of damage. Sedroin looking to pursue as well. Say's taking a couple of auto attacks. As is going to put him to an early grave as well. That's three down already. One uh, in exchange, and they're going to be taking this turret. Dragon's up in one minute 30 as well. So they're going to be trying to make a move down this bot lane. As it all said and done, 7 to 11. Not a bad comeback from N Faculty in terms of kills. Can they get another turret out of it? Well, Koi wasn't there to help out during that entire thing. Like, he was nowhere near to be seen because he rotated towards the middle turret, and yet PD wanted to go for the re-engage, and that cost him, and he had to get so perfect. He did an insane amount of damage during that fight, just hopping onto Avenue, hopping onto Broki in there, just to kind of work them down completely. And the end of things, they pick up three kills, they pick up two turrets as well, and they close that gold difference quite quickly. Quite beautifully as well. Look at that, 32,000, make it 33,000 to 36. So 3,000 gold leads still in favor of playing Ducks. So, I mean, they're not, not by, no, uh, by no means out of the woods yet, but they're kind of, they're looking through the trees now and they're starting to find a way out. And, uh, I mean, the Lucian still is a huge threat to them. Six to one, got to assist as well to give him that little extra boost in gold. He's already got his IE and static, and I mean, he's about 800 gold in. Thing is, that fight would have would have been different if Broki wasn't staying on top of Avenue because they got comboed down by LeJonk's jump, LeJonk's LeBlanc's jump. The Bronx. Um, they got completely comboed down because of that, and that's what just destroyed them. Like if he just was in a different position, he would have had enough return damage to hold them off, uh, maybe pick up a couple of kills or two. So, to be very careful of that dragon coming up right now, as you can see it just flying in. And they have the Scuttle Crab, and they also have Syndra up towards the top side. If anyone does potentially push in, instead they're going to leave the dragon uh, up and rotate towards middle here. Maybe just apply some pressure towards that middle inhibitor turret. They're going to try and find a route, an avenue, and it looks like they're going to struggle to do just that. As, I mean, that's the first time I've seen the Azir turret do something. It does actually go down the end. Dragon, out of quarter health. They're looking to do something, and LeBlanc, all she can do is just try and tickle Koi, and that's magic resist just says nope as he lives to fight another day, but that dragon's going to die fast now. Yeah, they don't want to get stolen away this time here, and they won't be. Lucian picks up a kill, they get their second stack, and now they might look for the disengage here, or they should be looking for the disengage. Is Koi, though, going to get his Gnar ultimate up just a second, or his transformation might go over the wall as well. Not even going to flash for that one, and we'll just back away. So we'll be more than happy with picking up the dragon, get that second stack here, and clear out the waves a little bit quicker, and then we'll return with a eh, decent amount of money. Spent 1,800 here on Koi, 1,100 on two Brokey. Oh, Koi actually going in on his Zio. Yeah, and Zayo cannot fought, fight that one. Look at this. He does so little damage. Zayo knows that his teammates are coming to back him up, and so uh, not forced to flash away. But as that one ends, again, this is looking worryingly like uh, PD doing what they do best and struggling to kind of push where it hurts. They know they have the advantage, or they at least had the advantage. They certainly still do to some extent. But what they need to do in, is really... <sighs> They need to win a team fight at some point within the next 10 minutes. Because <laughs> at the moment, as it stands, all then faculty are going to do is just relax and uh, watch as PD continue to fumble, then stumble on their way to trying to wrap this game up. Well, PD, up by four kills, up by about 4,000 gold. They've got. An item difference mid lane. They got a full item difference between the uh, two mid laners. They have 
let's just call it like half an item between the top laners, and their AD carry is obviously a full item ahead, if not a little bit more. I feel like PDF owns it, play the smart, then this should be their game to win. It's just whether or not they can do that here, and whether or not they don't get bursted down here, but they're trying to chase perfect, who just hops right back oh, into that direction line to get away. That was a fantastic little set of LeBlanc plays, and that shows the mobility and the assassination potential that that champion possesses. That's some sexy League of Legends there. As that's already the support now down and out. We've seen some fantastic plays here as to this evening and this afternoon about uh, assassins just taking down supports. Obviously, supports are a huge target uh, in these in these fights. Of course, every little helps, and they're going to be trying to find some sort of way, some sort of chink in the. Uh, Fnatic armor. Fnatic? That'd be interesting. Be I said that faculty. earlier already. Yeah, you did. Oh. Let's see if they do find the chink of the armor in. Obviously, Baron could be a possibility. I feel like they want to keep skirmishing away. They're trying to be careful. As long as Perfect can't keep getting fed, like as long as they deny him kills and don't get caught out like that, then they should maintain their strength. But with that void stuff coming in for Perfect, going to help mitigate a lot of the MRO coins been able to build up. You can see... Uh, it's not doing that much, but uh, Deathcap's done behind this. It's going to be troublesome here for the PD side. And that kind of barrage of like distant cl uh, gap closing spam is going to be on such a short cooldown at this stage. It's already uh, halfway to being completed up. And that's with very little CDR built. Just imagine the Oof, damage. Oh, Sword's perfect. She's going to be going down most likely. Looks like Mountain's in a similar situation. Drops the box, but he's going to be going low. Well, it looks like the Zonyas has been forced as well as look at that. Zio, as soon as he turns back to... Oh, back away from gold, he goes down and they're looking to prowl for a second, gets it as Thresh does fall and Sword's perfect and Cedrian just trying to re retreat and get back, gather some resources as PD. That is a successful team fight. We said they needed to win one and let's see what they can do with two kills under their belt. They're almost able to pick up LeBlanc as well, like right in this bush here as they just threw like every skill shot they possibly have. Looks like they're going to back away and go for Baron. Spare play on their part, not to mention catching out perfect there, a great little bit of an exchange. And then Brokey putting out some real big numbers during that fight. So they're going to get Baron off of this at the 28, 29 minute mark. Well, unless they're going to bait it in. They do get spotted, though, by the Scrying Orb. And they might actually not even commit for it. Why are they killing time? This was this is p classic PD. They have the time. They have the chances. And all they seem to do is waste it. Oh, it's sad to see like, now a chance for them to really stop putting a nail in the, the fir well, first nail, perhaps, in the end faculty coffin. Instead, opting to back off and give and faculty even more breathing room. Uh, breathing room is all they really need right now at this point. The longer this game goes on, more damage. More damage that and faculty will do here. As you can see, they're pushing the top turret here. A little bit secure that one. Now we'll go 4-5. And they take the confusion, the PD had, like, why do they just not commit to something? They had an inhibitor turret they could have taken, they had a Baron they could have taken, but this indecision just screwed them over. It certainly did. I think indecision is pretty much PD's middle name at this stage. They, they're very good players. Individually, they're very strong, and they seem to know what they're doing uh, kind of roughly as a team, but when it comes to making these big decisions, these kind of game-changing decisions, these kind of steps towards a victory, they always seem to be either faltering or taking too long to make that decision. And N faculty certainly don't have that problem. And it's just a case of who can make the decision faster. And faculty are making it. 45,000 to 41,000. And oh, dearie me, there was an Elise on the map. LeBlanc changed that as that's the jungler down and out for 30 seconds. See what they can do with that 30 second period of five versus four. And faculty trying to do something, but Avenue has other plans. Let's look at the damage already that Azir can put out. That turret around to about half health. As, uh, perhaps they're going to start putting some auto attacks on that turret. The Cullen comes out trying to clear the wave. They want to make sure that this tin tower cannot fall anytime soon. As uh, looks like Koya at that front line is going to get hooked in, but there's no one ready to follow up Mountain. Just doing his very best to put something down, some sort of contribution towards this kind of skirmish in the top lane. It can't be afforded to be caught out like that, because honestly, if their jungle does die, if if Perfect's able to one-shot someone like uh, you know currently on the roster, well, you don't have much hope in this one. And they have to play smarter. They have to play smarter if they want to have a chance of closing this game out. I mean, they they already had what was a six seven thousand gold lead, 
and they've almost completely lost that. Now they might lose out a Dragon as well here. They're coming in to the pit as quick as they possibly can. Dragon will be uh, picked up. That's the second one here for Infanticide, as we had the steal coming for Perfect a little bit earlier on. And so is surely PD are just throwing this game away. Oh, Koi. He's maybe trying to stop them from back, and here's the rest of the team is going straight towards Baron. This could be good. This is finally a bit of a non-indecision. Uh, they're looking to be finally starting to do something. Uh, there's uh, something very positive. Here comes the TP, though they have the vision and they know it, but this is not a chance to stop. They just need to catch him with a cocoon. The Orlando stun, that could be enough. Zyve forced to Zonya's wow. away from that one, but I can't see Baron's health. How close is it to going down? It needs to go down fast. It is. It's going to go in favor of PD, and Zio. Fortunately, is going to be going down in the same second. Managed to take Syndra with him, though. Looks like the PD side looking incredibly low, and this could very well be a Baron in vain as they're going to immediately be take, put straight away back to the grave. Corky picks up one. Strong start already from Infacity. Lucian looking equally as low, and you can't really push Koi. Koi is a tank. He's a monster. He's Meganar, and he's taken three of you. It's going to take them about 10 minutes to finish him off as he does leave Meganar form and finally goes back down. So it's the three for one in the end of it, and I mean, uh, fantastic response. Dirty. Fantastic. This ward is dirty. There you go, you get Baron, you lose four people, almost losing the fifth Cohen coming on. Sajin oh, gonna drop from this one, so yeah. luckily Broke able to pick up a kill, but obviously with the Baron changes, as long as you have one person alive, it'll be alright. But still, to lose four people when going for Baron like that, I mean, gotta hurt to Zayo because he... He Zonia's the DFG and the ultimate out of Syndra. Like, got rid of those ultimates onto him, made it so a perfect couldn't be, hit, uh, couldn't be hit by him. So that was really well done by him to obviously stall for as long as possible. Yeah, he went down, but he took one person with him um, before that happened. Yeah, not uh, not too shabby uh, once that's all said and done. I mean, it seemed like a right, it seemed like the right move. It did. And I mean, I knew the wood was there. I wasn't quite expecting Zio just to go in as this kind of stop, trying to slow down the Baron, and perhaps if they'd ignored him or, I don't know, any kind of... I don't really know the best approach that would have been. Perhaps that was the best approach. It didn't go too well for them, though. As, uh, look at the end faculty closing this gap. It was 11 to 4, just to reiterate. And now we've seen an extra 9. <laughs> there we go, to 4. So end faculty really picking this one up. And if you're wondering if that really is the pace that took me to do some simple addition and subtraction, it is. It's all right. It happens to the best of us. <laughs> God, <laughs> that's why I try not to do math on stream because it, it doesn't work <laughs> just, out well most of the time. People hear the pause, and you're sat there like, so nine, take It's away. a dramatic pause. Yeah, that's it. It's that's exactly pause. what it was. It's, it's, suspense. it's to give you guys a chance at home to do the math before oh, I right. tell you what it is. <laughs> exactly. you know, I'm so glad you're telling them our secrets. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But look at the damage that Lucian does, even on the waves. Eight for one. Somehow, Brokey has managed to just die once during all of this comeback from end faculty. The thing is, it... <sighs> I feel so bad for him. He's having such a good game. The thing is, if Perfect one-shots someone on his team, he immediately just runs because he can't really stay and commit for the fight. Like That's the problem he's kind of having here. He can destroy, obvious. He can build some magic resist so he can make sure to survive the damage that could come his way. Especially from him and Azir, who almost Azir doesn't have to be as close to Broki as Perfect has to be. Look at this. Bait him in. I'm just clearing out that vision here. Trying to run around as a group and... Meantime, with Brokey having that Baron buff, looks like they want to go for a push on the middle. And they're going to do their very best to do it, see if they can perhaps keep Lucian at the back line this time. He's always been having issues with just one of his teammates disappearing, disintegrating at the hands of LeBlanc, and he doesn't want that to happen this time. Try to clear out the vision, they want to have some sort of element of surprise. And don't forget Koi in that bot lane, he's got TP. He's going to be pressuring that bot turret quite nicely, but that's going to be going down. <laughs> just headbutting it. Just bashes it in with his noggin. And that does actually force Soz Perfect into that bot lane. And that's actually a pretty good setup if they wanted to make a move for mid now. They know there's no chance of that LeBlanc assassination. Instead, though, have to turn their attention to top. Oh, he's still trying to duel it out here. He's going to keep that wave shoved in. It looks like they kind of resort to a little bit of a split push strategy that they've depended on before. And he needs to be careful. He has teleport up, but the rest of his team is nowhere to be seen. The rest of his team is waiting on top lane here to go for a push onto that tier 2 turret. So he's going to head back to base, sitting on 1400 gold. Could buy up if he wants to. And then push in with a teleport back to this turret. But remember, they have the Baron, uh, they had a Baron buff still. So it's going to be very hard to cut out these waves, but luckily for Infaculty, they have that second Dragon buff. They have it, and they're going to be clearing waves as fast as they possibly can. As uh, the PD side art just knocking on their door. You can see this exchange in this bot lane. Zero just, it's like the top lane has now moved to the bottom and they're back to the laning phase. 
There's CEO this time just clearing the wards. Trying to stop the split push presence from being anything other than a nuisance. Skullcrab picked up. Is it's going to get that extra bit of vision? I mean, it's interesting to see that, that with Drake coming up in 50 seconds, but the entire team is just going to have to back up, buy, gather resources, and prepare themselves for this one because this is a big Baron for both. Big Baron? Sorry, big Dragon for both teams. Of course, the second for both. Remember, Playdux didn't finish the game last time until they had that five stack of Dragon, and right now they're sitting on two. So we'll get the movement speed, yes, but I feel like they're not confident to finish off the game. I mean, they had a 6,000 gold lead. And yet they let it dwindle down to only about 4,000, as you can see. I and mean, yeah, 2k isn't that big of a difference, but you know, you take away the bear that they just got, you take away a couple of turrets they just picked up as well. It was a lot closer than it is now. It was, and of course, items on everything. If you're making mistakes that uh, we've seen from PD in some of these team fights, that could really cost them as well. Here we see the Drake starting to make his way into his den. And who's going to be making the first move for this? This directed camera is just going ham right now everywhere. <laughs> Oh, you can see though. Nice cocoon lands on a perfect. Not going to pit the fight though. That would have been nice to fall up with the crescendo and a complete burst, but they will pick up the drive. They get the move speed. The flash crescendo comes in. This could be good. Culling doesn't quite connect them to anyone though. It's just there for show as they're forced to back away. And I think N Faculty are going to do exactly the same. And now with a third Drake under the belt, they have that movement speed they can force and they can also choose to disengage it with it. Well, try and disengage, of course. And they're being pursued by a LeBlanc and a Thresh. It's not always that easy. Easier said than done. In the meantime, you can see LeBlanc darting. Why are they taking red buff? Just go get your inhibitor turret. Why? <laughs> They're taking what they can, and this is a fantastic step in the right direction from PD. That was so dumb to take your red buff instead of defending your inhibitor. They cleared out the the, the, co the cove after losing the red already, I believe. And they're like, all right, well, forget the inhibitor. Red's more important. Why would you do that? They have the numbers to, f to, c to at least contest it. And instead, opting for the red buff, that's going to be... They seen how scared PD's been every time trying to approach that turret, and yet they just give him a free pass. That was such a big mistake. It's a huge mistake, and it's not a mistake you can afford to make, especially if you're looking to get yourself into the LCS. And faculty making mistakes at this stage in the game. Obviously, 2,500 euros uh, on the line. 38 minutes mark has just ticked over, and the gold lead still firmly in the hands of PD. Items are looking. I mean, just it's worth highlighting just how tanky Nar must be now. Randuin, Spirits Visage, he's got himself the MR from both Null Magic Mantle and Merc Treads and the Hex Drinker. So, I mean, you throw magic spells at Koi and he just he's going to shrug them off at this stage. That Scrying Orb use right there out of Brokey, catching them out at the red buff. So well done because they were setting up a bait for them. And they obviously do prevent that from happening. So, very smart, really great map awareness throughout of playing Ducks. I wish they had that little bit of extra oomph though. 5k gold difference. They haven't eaten one Lucian. They're tanky enough to deal with the damage coming out of perfect. Yet they're still really hesitant to push out and use this advantage to their, for lack of a better word, to their advantage. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. Pushing the advantage for their advantage. And uh, I, yeah, I, I think I'm going to come back to that word hesitant. It does seem to be a case of them just being a little too anxious and worried to make them, to make mistakes. And all it's doing is forcing and faculty to, uh, to kind of pull their socks up and start getting back into the game. But still, that gold need is uh, is always going to be an ever-present uh, issue. As, as the game progresses there, that becomes less of an issue as the uh, items for both sides still starting to come in. Of course, LeBlanc getting dangerously close towards that Rabadons and Syndra actually managing to complete the Void Staff in the process. Brokey finally finishing off that Banshee's Veil, and that's something he's been trying to work on for a while. Because once you get that Banshee's Veil, that's going to give him both the magic resist, but also he's going to be slightly less of a juicy target for that LeBlanc assassination. I hope with those two items built that they're finally like, all right, we can finally push six item Lucian. Now almost a six item, you know, mid laner on Syndra. This is their time to shine. They have them all funneled into a, you know, a tight area for Gnar and the Crescendo. And yet, again, still hasn't. Just gonna take control of the Baron Pit though. Trying to maintain some sort of uh, advantage here. And of course that Scuttle Crap giving the vision. Oh, which has a side here in faculty and it looks like now they're just going to push top lane, which I would really not agree with here. And I actually wonder what that color was up there, but I found out it's just the, the turret. Anyways, you can see the water. They're always spun up. PD trying to move in towards the blue buff. I mean, the stun will be enough to land and actually open up a fight here. But obviously, you know, Zara trying to keep him at range here with the sand soldiers. And now Baron being started. This is kind of make or break for PD. They've had some success at Baron in the past, and 
They're looking to force something out of someone, and they don't want Mountain. That's the last thing they want. Already Azid melts on the rift, and he's looking for another one. Mountain going to be meeting a similar fate sometime soon. That's actually going to be going over to Koi, most likely. No, Brokey snatches that one away. Already two men down. This could very well be a huge upset if they manage to take this team fight now. Those spawn timers are going to be long around that 45-second mark. Soz perfect, trying to get away. He's on LeBlanc. If ever there was a champion to do it, it would be him. But Nar is on the hunt, and he's surely going to connect. He just needs to find that last auto attack. Leash is on but it's not enough. He can't be taking Nara as a pet as they're going to be making their way in. And surely, surely, PD have got this. It would seem so here. So start to attack that first Nexus turret game down about half HP. That one's going to fall here. They have Corky alive. They have Zin alive as well to help defend from this one. But they're not even going. Sedgwick getting caught out. He's going to be blown up. And Plain Duck's going to close this game out, picking up the second Nexus turret, picking up the victory in the Grand Finals of the EPS Germany winner 2014 League of Legends season. And that was well-deserved. So well deserved. Fantastic performance from playing Ducks. They look to be a bit shaky in all these games, and they're going to be so happy with that. So very happy. You can see them on the screens now. They've got big smiles on their faces, and they are, I mean, they're not surprised, but they know that they worked hard, and they've got so much to show for it now. 2,500 euros, of course, that grand prize, and it's all good in the playing Ducks hood. You can see a dance in the background as well. Yeah, they're definitely happy about that one. In faculty again, you know, a little bit upset by it. But I don't think they have too much to worry about because they still have the L6 expansion tournament looking forward to next week. And obviously they have to keep their hopes high. Playing Ducks, a big victory for them. Let them know that they can compete with the best. And you can never count them out. And you know, honestly, we had in faculty as being the big favorites. I remember doing a little bit of a write-up here for EPS saying in faculty we're the team to beat. And we're looking at pretty easy stomp for them. But they put up a lot of work here. It wasn't the prettiest of wins. It didn't you know, happen in 20, 25 minutes. But they got there in the end. That's all that really matters. It does. And then faculty, there's a... It's not a great finish for them. They've, they kind of came here with a chance of hoping to perhaps, you know, warm up. We described it as perhaps like a practice, a battleground for them to just kind of sort the little kinks out before they go into the expansion tournament. All this has done is put them on tilt, perhaps, and or even just been a bit of a warning to them saying, hey, just so you know, you could very well be in trouble. And uh, and faculty, probably back to the drawing board for them. Some of them think their tricks and uh, perhaps their comps. I think perhaps you already mentioned before that some of those uh, picks and some of those comps are something we probably won't be seeing in the expansion tournament. Yeah, I, w I wouldn't. I mean, they, they were definitely hiding things today. Yeah. And again, for a certain reason, but we shouldn't even talk about them anymore because, you know what, they have their expansion tournament to talk about, but the, the 15 seconds of fame here goes to the playing Ducks. 100%. It was a little bit rough for them. You know, Koi had, you know, some pretty strong games the majority of the time. Brokey had a couple of iffy plays. Zoe as well, we really questioned in terms of his jungle picks, but he really came through when it mattered. Yeah, playing Elise fantastically. I mean, all credit goes to him. I'm always, I'm the Elise doubter, but he showed that he can most definitely be relevant. I mean, playing Elise twice and winning two games, I'm sure there's some sort of correlation there. So fantastic performance from him and playing Ducks. And uh, really good to see those guys knocking in faculty down a peg or two. All right, guys, well, that's going to do it for us here today. Thanks again for tuning in. You can make sure to follow us both on Twitter, at Jay Kaplan, at Machini TV. Make sure to follow the Twitch channel as well. And also make sure to follow the Twitch channel at ES or ESL TV underscore LOL because the expansion tournament will be going live tonight for NA and, of course, next week for EU, of course. Even on top of that, we'll have Intel Extreme Masters clone a couple it's days after be, that one. So a, a lot of, league of yeah, a lot of league of, like, league of Legends action coming your way here in the next few weeks. Make sure to tune in for that one. Hope you guys had a great night. We did, and we'll see you guys next time.